Hey guys, Wes Logan here with Bass Resource. We're going to be talking about swim jigs and winter time. And a lot of, you know, if you ever read an article in Bass Magazine or anything like that, you're never probably going to hear those two words put together as swimming a jig in the winter time. But there is a few situations where if it happens around your local area, you need to go check it out because it could end up being really special and you'll be able to catch some fish in the winter time that haven't been pressured and, and it'll really be a special day because I've had them, I've, ha I've experienced it. And basically what what that is is you're in the winter time and we're talking about from you know mid-november to probably the end of february maybe even into the middle of march just depends on what kind of winter we've had that year if we're going to have an early spring or where you're at in the country so, and with that being said is most of the time in the winter time i feel like your water temperatures are going to be in those low 40s uh the majority of the time but what happens every now and then is you'll get you know a week or two and it may be only a couple days where you'll get on a warming trend or you'll have a warm rain you know come in and have a bunch of run in come in and what that does is it's going to muddy up the river if you're on a river system it'll muddy up a lake whatever it's going to happen it's going to get muddy and then when the sun finally does come out the particles in that mud and the water actually warm up faster so the water's going to bump up a few degrees and i'm telling you guys anytime in the winter time when that water bumps up two or three degrees you need to go and you need to go into a shallow area, not really fish your, you know, your main lake bluffs, your, you know, your rocky banks that hold heat. You're going to be able to still catch fish there. But if you ever get a rise in that water temperature, you need to check some shallower areas. And I'm not saying go all the way to the back like you would in a spring spawning situation, but maybe 100, 200 yards back into a pocket or a little backwater. Those fish may get out of that current or off that main drag or off the main lake and pull up there because with that water rising, all the bait fish, the crawfish, everything up shallow is going to get active for a few days. And those fish know that. So when they feel that and they've got that internal timer, they know that it's winter time. They're not near spawning but when they feel that water temperature bump up they're like i can run up there and eat for a little while till it starts cooling back off and you know have easy pickings of stuff that hadn't been messed with in a while so with that being said when you come into these backwaters just just say for instance we've got some you know some bank grass and and all the grass is going to be dead you may have some bank grass mixed in with some whatever some branches some logs some bushes anything like that those fish are going to go to that hard cover because the water's still cold, mind you. It may have just went from 42, 43 to 48, 47, 49. So you've got an increase in temperature, but those fish are still going to be a little bit lethargic. The water's probably going to be a little bit dirtier. They're going to be on something, whatever's in the water. Like I said, that first 100, 200 yards or 200 feet, however big or small the backwater is, is where you want to be checking. And what you want to do is, I mean, you're just going to take that swim jig and I, I've like in all my other videos, what I throw, you know, all the time, most of the time is the five, six inch dirty jigs, no jack. Um, color wise with that, most of the time in the winter, the water is dirty um, with a, you know, with a, if a warm rain comes in, you're going to have some stained water. I really, really like a dark color, a black and blue, a solid black, a black and purple, whatever your preference may be. Um, that's just my confidence. That's my number one that I'm going to go to to start with. Um, if I feel like there's more shad or whatever type of bait fish you're around in the area, that's when I'll swap over. Or if I've been, I've started with the black one and I've had a few roll on it and not really commit to it, like they're, they're showing themselves, but they're not really eating the bait. That's when I'll swap to a white. Um, hardly ever in the wintertime will I be throwing a natural color. I just feel like the white or black is hard to beat. Um, and, and that goes into even on into the springtime. But for the wintertime situation, you know, I like the dark color to start with and I like like the big trailer i like the zoom super speed crawl i feel like it moves a lot of water i don't bring the jig in very fast so it's kind of lethargic it's kind of just bouncing around on stuff um it's a really good i wouldn't say it's a great search bait in the winter but when you have those conditions it can be really special because if you see where you think one should be and you throw over there and you actually get the bite now you can make a mental note like that fish was beside a log a hundred feet inside a pocket you can pattern those fish very well with this swim jig pattern in the winter time if you have a warming trend going on um rod and reel and line setup is it's a seven six medium heavy um it's it's a it's a medium heavy, but it really acts a lot more like a medium. It's got a good parabolic bend to it. I like the Art Reinforcer is the one I use. And like I said, it's a 7.6 medium heavy. It's a little bit longer rod than a lot of people like to use. If you like a 7.3, go throw a 7.3. If you like a 7.2, throw a 7.2. But my, my personal opinion and preference would be a medium heavy um, or a real 
you know, flexible heavy. I, I, I'm kind of weary on the heavies just because their backbone runs so far up and you don't have a lot of tip when that fish does commit to the bait. Um, line is a 60 pound uh, Sunline fluorocarbon FX2, the frogging and flipping. That's just, that's my bread and butter when I've got the, the no jack, the 5 16 no jack. Um, reel is a 7 5 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, the reel I like to use is a, is a Lose Pro TI. Um, I mean, if my personal opinion on the reel is if you like an eight gear ratio, throw an eight. If you like a seven, throw a seven. I would not go below a seven with this technique just because you want to be keeping that jig up. And again, you don't want to bring the jig back to you fast. You just want to be able to keep it up and keep it moving around the cover to be able to get those reaction strikes and stuff like that. So if you like an eight, throw an eight. If you like a seven, throw a seven. But I wouldn't go below a seven. And that, that seven five to one Lose Pro TI has worked perfect for me. Uh, and just want to reiterate on how I, you know, work the jig when I throw it around the cover. If you if you've got some, you know, a, a blown up dead mat of grass beside a log, let, you want to throw it past it. Keep your jig like as soon as your bait hits, engage your reel, keep your rod up, bring the jig towards the, you know, or down the edge of the clump. Um, you get it up there, kind of let it fall a little bit, then you know, shake it a little bit. And, and once you do it for a while and you get a few bites, you'll figure out if the fish want it. You know, reel up high if they're hitting it on the fall. You know, just kind of let them tell you what they want. One thing I will, I just thought about it. One thing I will say about wintertime swim jigging is if you've got, let's say you've got a, a grass mat that's, you know, two feet by four feet and you swim down the right side of it and don't get a bite, you need to throw down, you need to throw over the top of it and you need to throw down the other side of it because a lot of times with the water being that cold, he's not gonna run a long way to go get it. He don't wanna exert all that energy because he's just sitting there. He's wanting to eat, but he's not gonna swim 10 feet to eat something. He's gonna wait till he's got an opportunity to eat something right in front of him so he don't exert a whole lot of energy getting him something to eat because it's basically pointless then. He's not gonna be running around schooling and all that good stuff. So so really pick apart your your cover options like if, you, if you're just one more for instance if you're throwing at a lay down throw down the right side and throw down the left side and a lot of times you'll notice that your second or third cast of something you'll actually get one to bite and most of the time I feel like that's when you've actually brought that bait into his smaller strike zone which is what you're gonna experience in the winter time but going back on everything winter time swim jigging if you look at the forecast and you've got a warm rain coming or if you've just got a warming trend with some real sunny days don't be afraid to get up there shallow in that dirty water in a few backwaters uh, it could really lead to a great day hope this helps and good luck to you guys